This video is a joint production between TrueTechTools.com and HVACRSchool.com. TrueTech Tools, quality tools, essential support. TrueTechTools.com. Hi, I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRSchool.com. Making this video today because TrueTech Tools sent me a really nice leak detector, one that I didn't even know existed up until recently. It's the Baccarat PGM-IR leak detector, which is essentially the most accurate leak detector, the most or highest resolution leak detector made um, in the portable markets. Generally speaking, it would be used in grocery store applications, applications where uh, you have a lot of different equipment and you need to be able to pinpoint leaks. Um, but today I'm actually gonna use it on a residential job. We had a situation where one of our technicians was not able to pinpoint a leak on a residential system. And so we had quoted as the customer a line isolation test, actually capping and pressurizing the lines. And so we had that scheduled to do today, but instead of doing that, we're actually gonna go and use the PGM IR and see if we can use that to pinpoint the leak, see what's going on. So this is the Baccarat PGM uh, IR, PGM-IR leak detector. The first thing that you notice about it, it's got like this, like this launch button switch on it. So you press that to turn it on. It's actually fairly easy to use. It's got an actual LCD display so you can see what's going on in it. One thing that you'll notice is it takes a while to warm up. So you want to start it up at least five minutes before you're ready to use it. And you want to start it up, like most leak detectors, in an area that you're pretty confident you don't have ambient refrigerants. So either outside or in this case, you know, away from where you're going to be doing the initial leak detection. And so generally, you know, you would use this, you would take the wand, you would put the wand inside uh, cases in a grocery store, and then it would uh, pick up refrigerant. That's how you would, that's how you would generally use this, but we're going to use it today in an application, um, just trying to find a leak in a typical chase. So setting it up is really easy. Set it to the refrigerant. You can hit any arrow key and then go down to gas type and then select whatever type of refrigerant you want to select. And it has a wide range of refrigerants that are included inside the device. We're just going to go ahead and keep it on 410A for now. So specifically, why is the PGM IR a superior leak detector to pretty much anything else made? Well, the reason is is really three primary areas that I've identified. The first is the resolution of the leak detector. It goes down to one part per million on all modern refrigerants, um, which is a pretty incredible uh, level of leak detection. Secondly, it has the refrigerant selector so that you can pick the specific type of refrigerant. That's not something you're going to get on a typical leak detector. And then finally, and what really makes it is something that you want to, may want to consider getting is that it gives you that part per million readout so that you can kind of track down the source of a leak even in a relatively large space. So say if you have a chase leak like we have today or you have a very small leak on a large system, you can actually start to hone in on the exact point of the leak. So in commercial service and commercial refrigeration and in certain applications in residential, the PGMIR is the only electronic leak detector that's going to find certain types of leaks. And so if you're using a traditional electronic leak detector, then your only options would be, if you don't have the PGMIR, would be to go to line isolation, maybe using dyes, things of that nature. Um, but you're still not going to get the advantage of sort of honing in on the exact location of the leak like you get by watching the LCD display on the PGMIR and kind of seeing as your concentrations increase as you get closer. It has what's called a coalescing filter, which is actually a filter that's in line on the probe. So if you follow the probe back, that's the coalescing filter. And so that filters out any contaminants or gunk that may be coming down the coming down the tube. Anytime it says purge like that, that's when it's actually drawing in air through the carbon filter. When it samples air, when it does its purge, it compares to air that's been pulled through this carbon filter. So it draws air through this carbon filter and that way it has pure purified air, or air that is, uh, does not contain refrigerant to compare against. It will not be affected by temperature, it will not be affected by relative humidity, um, so you're not going to get false positives when you walk into a cold freezer or you walk outside into the heat. Um, it's, it's really going to do a great job of not picking up false positives compared to pretty much any other leak detector. Another nice thing is, is that it will show you the peak reading. So the maximum amount of reading that you saw, that's what that is. So the highest I've seen is one part per million, which means that based on how it's reading right now, there is one part per million of ambient 410A in my office, which isn't surprising given that we have a bunch of tanks of R410A 
right outside my office and uh, we have equipment all over the place so it's not surprising we would have a little bit of ambient R410A in my office. All right, so we're ready to take this thing out to the field and see how it does. All right, so we're about to exit the truck to use the Bacharach PGM IR here with Jesse. Howdy. All right, so the first thing that we notice, we just we just came inside, is uh, we do have a, quite a bit of greening here, and I'm interested in why that is. Let's see right here too. So we're going to open it up and take a little closer look at that. All right, so what I didn't initially realize is that this is a new construction house. I mean, it's not like new, new. 2013, first thing I look at is always any sort of threaded connection. So we're gonna take a really close look at that, obviously. You see, as we get closer to the ground, we're getting some of this. And then another thing I always look for is where the drain is draining and when it's draining directly over the copper like it is here. Bleaching the grass. That's a good indication that the customer is probably putting bleach in the drain every month or so. And that's going right on top of the copper here. I mean, our chase is probably coming out right here. So we have our copper going underground. So this, you know, chlorinated water is just saturating right into the copper. Yeah, and what we're not saying is that this is where the leak is right now because we need we to prove know. it. But either way, we're going to mention to the customer about this so that way they stop putting bleach in it because it will be a pro even if it's not a problem right now it'll be a problem in the future but just based on seeing the greening as it gets closer and then it gets less green as it goes away we have an indication that something in the in the earth is is attacking the copper we haven't connected our gauges yet and the reason is is because we don't want to we don't want to introduce any ambient refrigerant into the air around the condenser until we've done a quick pass with the PGM IR around the condenser itself, but I am always looking for signs of oil. You know, I can feel a little bit of oil around here. It's likely just where the caps were taken on and off last time. Um, but that's a place I'm gonna check carefully. And then I'm always looking inside the condenser, especially, you know, discharge line connections. They can tend to have small pinholes. And then the tops and bottoms of accumulators can tend to have corrosion. Again, depending on your market, you'll have more or less of that. Um, this is where experience comes in. Generally, a system that's this new isn't usually going to have an accumulator leak. Um, we're still going to do a leak detection on it, but we're not going to focus on it as much as we would if it was old and already had a lot of rust on it. Uh, you have your discharge line muffler. These can also rust. They tend not to as quickly unless the paint has been scorched or if the system is running extremely hot. Um, then that can also tend to crack the paint, which then results in, can result in corrosion. We're always looking at all of the factory connections um, to make sure there's nothing abnormal there. Pressure switches. Um, so we're just gonna go through the entire thing. You can also set the range at which it will alarm by going to range. And then you can set the parts per million. I, I at one point in time had this set to a one part per million range, which is why it just kept going off all the time. But in general, they recommend that you set it to 10 parts per million as the range at which it starts to alert. So it just went through a purge. You can see right now we're reading zero parts per million. I'm just going to watch carefully. One thing that I have noticed about this is it's it's a little bit of a slow reader. It's not something that you can just put it on there and run away. All right, so now we're going through a purge. When it goes through a purge, it's not going to measure anything. Again, I'm not going to put I'm not going to put credence in you know one part per million. This is a leak that leaked down. Based on talking to the customer, probably over, you know, we had we went through winter, so let's say within six months we lost, on the outside, within six months we lost four pounds of Fortin A. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm just going to kind of set it here in the Armaflex and see, oh boy. So as we approached that yeah, Armaflex. So, yeah, as so we approach the Armaflex, we, we are picking up, and again, this is specifically calibrated for 410A, so it's not like a typical leak detector in that regard. A typical leak detector is going to pick up any refrigerant. This is looking specifically for our 410A, and uh, and yeah, we're we're picking up a lot on the reflex. Now we've got to figure out is it in, you know, is it back this direction? Is it this direction? So we've got to check for any fittings in here. Um, but at this point, it's going to be pretty likely. So right now, you can look. We've got, it's reading zero parts per million, kind of bouncing in between zero and one. What if you hover over the dirt area there, right where it looks like the bleach has been? They're right here. What if 
if we uh, dig that up a little bit. Yep. What do you think? That's what we're. Sound good? That's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna strip back this Armaflex because um, this is all damaged and terrible looking anyway. And uh, we'll dig it up, and uh, I'm gonna go inside as well and just see what we get in there. Right now we're reading one part per million in here. You can see here that there's definitely greening. Which, you know, I talked about this before, you know, this galvanic corrosion is expected. You know, the corrosion where the dissimilar metals connect to. You can see as it gets further away from the dissimilar metals and where there's less moisture, there's less corrosion. Which is why you always see tons of corrosion down at the bottom right hand corner on these coils. It's because you have moisture and you have dissimilar metals all in one place. But you can see we're, we're still reading in the low parts per million in this room. Um, I would expect to see more if we had a significant leak in this, in this coil. Don't you suck any of that water up in there. Careful with the water. But honestly, a little bit of increase, even if we did have a chase leak, would be expected. Go ahead and kind of stick it in the arm reflex, see if you pick up anything. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing our highest refrigerant concentrations inside the arm reflex, both inside and outside. So I'm pretty, pretty sure we can go ahead and hone in on that. In that suction line in the chase. So I'm going to try to cut into the return box underneath and, and see where the chase goes out. Well, I pretty much nailed that guess. There's where it goes down in. So there's our drain. It goes back and then our copper just goes straight up and that's that's what you typically see. They actually angle it so there's not going to be any joints in here they just angle they just push it straight up and then pull it so it's, it's there's not going to be any joints in here at all we're not seeing huge concentrations and even when i you can see this chase is actually really globbed with mastic it's really well sealed so you look i'm reading right near the ground level so if there was any you know ambient refrigerant it would kind of settle to this to this floor and uh, we're still only reading two parts per million. Well, now we're at three. But it's nothing like what we're seeing when we crack into the Armaflex. So Jesse has dug us, a, dug us a pit, exposed the chase. Does it seem to be, does the chase seem to be sealed? No. No, not at all. That's what I wanted to point out. I don't think it's sealed at all. It looks like they threw some mastic on here. But... It's interesting, because inside it's, inside it's really well sealed. Is it? Yeah, no, out here you got um, nothing. That's, what, that's the chase right there, coming in at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, as we get closer to this opening, I'm just here and we're already at six parts per million, seven parts per million of R410A. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not even in the chase and we're reading, oh, wow, 1,000 parts per million. Um, at this point, all we're really going to do is just check the copper that's above the ground now here. And just make sure that we don't have any, you know, we'll just do it with soap bubbles. Just make sure we don't have anything obvious, but I'm not hearing anything. This leak, I'm going to think we would almost hear. There we go. We're in the, yeah. So you can see we've got significant ambient refrigerant inside that chase. Now, one thing that I want to mention is, is that this is the problem with bleach. The problem isn't just the, anything that comes out of the end of this, of this pipe. And drips it's that if you have a chase application it can both backfill the chase which is very likely with the way that this chase was sealed yeah. but then also let's say this drain has a small leak in it in the chase you know, a small crack something inside that chase it's very possible that it could and if it does or, or a fitting that's not glued very well it'll actually fill up that chase with some with some bleach water which over time will just eat that copper away which is something that we do that we do see Let's go over here. You know, typically you'd think, ah, oh, well, you know, your caps leak a little bit, so you'll pick up a little bit around here, a little bit of ambient refrigerant. So I'm going to leave my probe right here, 
closer to the unit. We got nothing. So I'm actually traveling down the suction line from the unit, getting closer to the pit. It's hovering slightly above the ground. Here we go. Now we're hitting the edge of the pit where the chase empties out. You can just see it's just Yep. So we're gonna continue to do our due diligence. I'm gonna do a leak detection inside here as well and just make sure we're not picking up anything in here, but we've uh, pretty much narrowed it down at this point. So uh, what are we doing now? So I just wanted to pull out my, let me get this right, let me get this right, H10G leak detector. Jesse likes to call it the HG10. 10 HG. 10 HG, 10 HG, HG. that's what it is, yeah. H10G, yeah. and we're gonna see what it does in the same circumstance. Here, we stripped the whole thing back and bubble tested everything, leak tested everything, leak tested inside the condenser, just to, just to show that we did our full due diligence, even though I absolutely know it's in the chase. We took that we brought the customer out we demonstrated to them you know what we were seeing in parts per million so jesse's going to test his baccarat h10g yeah the h10g should pick up all the way down to, to 10 parts per million but you can see like like that demonstrates, this is a good working leak detector. This is a leak detector that we use to find the leak on that, on that, that tiny leak on the ductless. So, I mean, you're picking it up, but it's not the type of thing you would feel crazy confident about compared to what we were, what we were seeing with the big boy. Yeah, and I was really thinking, you know, just maybe over the hole here, it would be picking it up. Like it was with the other one, but yeah, it's the, not. Yeah, the other one's picking it up right here. This one, you have to, you know, you can't even be on this side necessarily. You kind of got to be back in here. Yeah. So, this service call kind of demonstrated two different things. A, it demonstrated why you don't tell a customer to use bleach down their drain. And then secondly, <laughs> it demonstrated the... Uh, the benefits of having a good leak detector. I think there's definitely a a use case or, or a, uh, a case to be made for having one of these types of leak detectors in a company. I mean, to because really, I mean, this this eliminated us doing a line isolation test. Right. I mean, we know it's in the line set yeah. as, as well as I would know it if I saw pressure dropping. Yeah. Okay, maybe not quite as well, but I literally have zero doubt. Do you have any doubt at all, Jesse, that it's a leak in the line set? No, I don't. And, you know, now we save the customer, what, $500? Right. For all the all the labor and everything to do a line isolation, let it stand, all that stuff. And then they're going to want to know, well, since you couldn't find it anywhere else, didn't you know it was in there? Right. That's always the mindset. Um, yep. and, and so it saves us time. It saves the customer money. actually makes us more money because now we're able to do the, the line set with less... Uh, customer pain and suffering which makes so. my job easier new service manager already doesn't have to have a customer complaint good stuff so i think there's a legitimate use case for these leak detectors it's not the kind of thing that you're going to put in every single technician's truck i mean honestly i, I get that but it does a really great job and if it can eliminate line isolation and you can have that level of confidence so pgm ir baccarat halogen leak detector, and especially if you're doing big commercial, industrial, that type of thing, I think it's a worthwhile investment. At least, you know, one per company, that kind of thing. So I'm Brian Orr with HVAC School, making this video in conjunction with True Tech Tools. Thank you for watching. See you next time. As the men and women of America lay in their beds with their laptops open, considering whether they should buy a PGMIR from truetechtools.com or maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel or possibly watch another great video. The man rests with his finger on the launch button, ready to launch the nuclear weapons.